Hello, good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. First of all, we thank the Almighty God for another wonderful day He has added to our lives. Even though there's a total shutdown called by Atsum and shutdown is still on, teachers cannot come to the college and have classes in person. We'll make use of technology so that everyone of the class can listen and learn from it. Let's pray in our hearts that in the midst of tough times, God will give us wisdom and discernment spirit to make use of the day as profitable as possible. Today I'm recording for you guys on the subject introduction to disciple making class and hermeneutics. In the previous class, we study what is a disciple, who is a disciple, why discipleship, and to whom we are commanded to disciple for Jesus. Let's pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day, another new day you added to our lives. We thank you for your manifold blessings you gave us. Due to total shutdown in our areas, we are not able to take class in person, but we can make use of the technology to have classes. Lord, I pray that as I'm doing records, help the students so that they'll be able to have the sound mind, the sound spirit, and be able to learn from this voice record. I ask your wisdom and discernment as we study introduction to disciple making. Guide us in Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Today we'll be talking about the differences of the words disciple, disciple making, and discipleship. We often use the terms disciple, disciple making, and discipleship interchangeably. We thereby confuse the differing or the difference activity associated with disciple, disciple making, and discipleship. We'll be discussing in detail. Number one, discipled. We talk already that a disciple is a student, a pupil, a learner, a follower. A follower of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. A disciple is someone who is following Jesus being changed by Jesus and is committed to the mission of Jesus. A disciple is someone who is following Jesus, being changed by Jesus and is committed to the mission of Jesus. What do we see in Matthew chapter 4 verse 19? And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishes of men. This is the word of Jesus Christ. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. In other words, or in the other way, all believers are called to disciples. All believers are disciples of Jesus. Disciples are called to follow Christ. And following him means helping others follow him. Disciples are called to follow Jesus Christ, and following him means helping others follow him. After Jesus' death and resurrection, the twelve disciples still had a special position. What is that special position we are talking about? That is, apostle. They are apostles. Why? They had been eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry and were called apostles, so they have this special position. People who came to faith later on did not have this special position anymore, but they too are called disciples. In Acts chapter 6 verse 7, let's read Acts chapter 6 verse 7, And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. 
the word of God continue to increase, the number of disciples multiplied greatly where? In Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. That means obedient to the faith of Jesus Christ. That's what we see. So in Acts chapter 11 verse 26, we read that disciples are also called Christians. This might be more common term nowadays, but actually every true Christian is a disciple of Jesus Christ. We have to remember that. And what is more, Jesus calls his followers to make disciples of what? All nations. Where do we find that? We find this in Matthew chapter 28 verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in verse 20 we see, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Here the main thing that I would like to take it out from this passage is, make disciples of of all nations so this is the great commission we have mentioned before in the class too spreading the gospel witnessing jesus christ means teaching people how to be a follower of jesus in all parts of their lives did you realize that this is your calling as a christian we are called to be a followers of Jesus in all parts of our lives. And the question is, are we a disciple who are called by Jesus Christ? Are we a disciple who makes disciples? That we'll continue to study later. So, study point by point. And in this disciple, we'd like to discuss about point number one. That is, disciples is the one who follows Jesus. Disciple is the one who follows Jesus. When we came to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, or accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, we meet a man who calls us to come and die. We know a man who calls us to come and die. And he calls us to follow him. He is not just calling us, he is calling us to follow him. And not only that, to learn from him. It doesn't matter whether we are smart or stupid, rich or poor, young or old, it doesn't matter. The only requirement is that we repent of rebelling against our creator and cling to him through faith. If we do this, we are promised forgiveness of our sins and reconciliation that means to have peace agreement with god jesus call us to come and die so that we might live those who follow jesus by faith are known as his disciples some suggest that disciples are super christian while christians are just normal believers and disciples are super christians but the scripture, however, offers no support for this distinction. So there are no distinctions between disciples and Christians. If we accept Jesus as our Savior, we are his disciples. We are his followers. We are either following Jesus or we are not. There is no middle ground. That's why if we are Jesus followers we are christians if we are christians we are followers of jesus point number two disciple is the one who imitates and replicate jesus what is meant by imitate and replicate jesus when we talk about imitate we are doing like 
Jesus. When we talk about replicate, we are like Jesus. We are the copy of Jesus. At the heart of the following, Jesus call to imitate him and replicate him. As disciples, we are called to imitate Jesus' love. And we are called to imitate his missions, his humility, his service, his suffering, and his obedience to the Father. So these are the important points in which we as followers of Jesus have to imitate Jesus. First, we see we are to imitate Jesus' love. We find in John chapter 13 verse 34. So let me... John chapter 13 verse 34. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So the new commandment is given to us already. That is to love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. As disciples, we are called to imitate Jesus' love. As we read from John chapter 13 verse 34, how is the disciple of Jesus be known? By their love for one another. If we love one another, then the disciples of Jesus be known. And next we see about his mission. What is the mission of Jesus Christ? The mission of Jesus Christ is to be fishers of men. Call disciples to be fishers of men. And thirdly, we see about the humility of Jesus Christ in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let's read this. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Have this among yourself. What? Which is yours in Christ Jesus. What is in Christ Jesus? Here in the context of Philippians chapter 2, we see about the humility of Jesus Christ. That is what the mind of Jesus Christ is. So, we are to be humbled we are to cultivate the life of humility, that is, the mind of Christ. And also, we see about his service in John chapter 13, verse 14. Let's read. What is his service? John chapter 13, verse 14. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. This is the service of humility of our Lord and teacher. And also, we see about his suffering in 1 Peter chapter 2.21. Let's read. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. Following the steps of Jesus Christ. In what? in his suffering and this is the example we can learn from our lord jesus christ so if we are the followers of jesus if we are his disciples we are to welcome suffering and also we see that jesus christ sound an example by his obedience to the father in john chapter first uh, john chapter 2 verse 3 to 6 let's read and by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandment. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandment is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him truly, the love of God is perfected. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. Whoever says, he abides in him or to walk in the same way in which he walk. We are ought to walk in the same way in which he walks. That's what we see. So, Jesus Christ 
set an example to be obedient so we are also ought to obey or to walk in the same way our Lord Jesus Christ walked. If he obeys to the Father, we are also to obey our Lord Jesus Christ by following his footsteps, by obeying him. Since he is our teacher, we are to learn from him and strive in the power of the Holy Spirit to become like him. This growth in Christ-likeness is a lifelong endeavor. When we talk about endeavor, it's a lifelong walk. It's a lifelong attempt. It's a lifelong effort. It's a lifelong trying that is empowered by the hopeful expectation that one day we'll see Jesus Christ face to face. So lastly, let me read one scripture portion taken from 1 John chapter 3 verses 2 and 3. Let me read out. Beloved, we are God's children now and what will be has not appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So we have hope. We have hopeful expectation that we will be like him when we see him face to face one day. That's what we see about Jesus Christ and that is going to be the final and the glorified or the doctrine of glorification would be fulfilled. Disciple is the one who imitates and replicates Jesus. Okay, from the next class, we'll continue with disciple as the one who helps others to follow Jesus. We'll stop here for today. Thank you for listening. God bless you.